Hey guys, welcome to My Disney Brain. This is Kelly. I'm in the studio this week with my daughters, Nia and Imani. And uh, we're going to do a review of Beyonce's Black is King. So welcome aboard. If this is your first time, thank you for joining us. It is our pleasure to have you aboard. Please make sure that you go ahead and lock us in to wherever you're listening to us from, wherever you listen to podcasts. So the next time that we publish, you'll know and you'll be the first to be able to listen to our content live. Uh, Next, for those of you who have been with us and continue to come back week after week, thank you so much for joining us again. This is going to be a really good uh, show. Uh, I think most people by now have seen Black is King and probably have a lot of opinions on it. And so do we. And we're going to share those with you today. And we're going to jump straight into it. I only want to. Uh, alert you of two two things. Uh, last week, we talked to you about, or I should say last podcast, we talked to you about the cross promotions that we're doing. And I want to mention those podcasts one more time so that we get maximum results for these podcasters. And the first is Lockdown with WD. The young lady's name is Sarah. And if you're looking for new Disney challenges, you can join Sarah on her new podcast, Lockdown with WD. Where during the lockdown, she started to watch all of the Disney films that's ever been released in chronological order. She's going for all 400 of them. Not only does she give her own thoughts on each episode, she also looks at the origins of each story and she digs out facts and theories about each of them. So join her in and reveal in the Disney fun. Lockdown with WD is a Chili D audio podcast. And it can be found on Spotify, iTunes, or wherever you are listening right now. So make sure you check out Sarah at Lockdown with WD. And this next one, uh, unfortunately, I said the wrong name of it last week when we were talking about it. Uh, I think I said Where Streams Come From, and the name of it is Where Streams Come True, T-R-U-E. So Where Streams Come True is a media review podcast. It's by the cast of Studio 76, where they suffer through the entire catalog of Disney Plus. Each week, a random title from the streaming service is selected and is reviewed from blockbuster hits to animated sequels to titles with outdated cultural depictions. Join them as they discuss the history of the Disney company and discover brand new content. The vault's been opened. Swung wide, for better or worse. You can find them on social media, YouTube, and whatever pot catcher you're, you prefer or you're listening to right now. Audience members can submit their own movie reviews and suggest any category that they will and decide you know, what's going to drive them crazy next. So check out Where Streams Come True. Where Streams Come True. So... Uh, needless to say, we'd like for you also to follow my Disney brain on all of our social media platforms, uh, IG, Facebook, and of course, our blog is mydisneybrain.com. Please subscribe there because it's a lot of good information there. But we're going to jump straight into it. And for those of you who are watching us on YouTube this week, you can see that in the studio. Uh, again, I have my daughters with me. And also, uh, we have in the background our... Um, tribute to what we're going to be talking about today, which is Black is King. So I'm sure everybody's excited to talk about uh, what they thought about it. We're not going to be very long, but we will be strong. Um, So hello, Nia. Good morning. And Imani. Hey, Hey. All right. Black is King. The biggest question. This is what we're going to start off. We're going to do a ranking. All right. One to ten. And we're going to talk about what we rank uh, Beyonce for this particular production. And then just an overview of your thoughts about the production. So let's start with Nia. (laughs) (laughs) I'll go ahead, Imani. Okay. So on a scale of 1 to 10, um, I think this film is off the charts. I think it's a strong 11. Um, Overall, I liked everything about it from the colors to the clothes to the music to the actual visuals and how it correlates with the Lion King as well as um, the black experience so I give this film a 11 11 okay on the short of 1 to 10 all right so we guess that's good Nia what do you think I'm going to give it a 10 I am not really 
I'm giving it a 10, like, the film itself. I'm not trying... I'm trying not to add, like, Beyonce's other stuff into it and just looking at her. I'm giving the film a 10 itself because I really like the... What's the word I'm looking for? Um, um You really like the... Uh, <laughs> it seems like... The very, production value? No, the, uh, like, it's very research. Everything seems... Authentic. That's oh, the word I'm looking authentic. for. Yeah, there you go. yeah. She, she, she did a lot of work, bless her heart, and whoever her team was that put this together. Um... My my is not that high, uh, mainly because I um, had a little trouble following it. I shouldn't say trouble. Trouble is a little. Um, uh, it's not the right word. It it, it was a, a little spaced out for me. Like I understood the story uh, or what it was supposed to be, and then sometimes I felt like we were watching a music video, which is whatever. It's 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 fine. But I would say it's probably a really strong eight for me. And if I go back and watch it again, now that I've read a lot of stuff about it, I probably would score it higher. But um, for someone in my um, demographic, uh, if you will, I, I, I don't listen to pop music uh, at all. Uh, and I watch this c- kind of like the way we did Hamilton. My thoughts were I've heard a lot about it, so I'm going to give it a go. And we watched it as a family. And my wife and I kind of had the same feedback. In some areas, we were lost. <laughs> <laughs> we were like, what? I mean, some things took a sharp left turn, you know. And fortunately, we had our seatbelts on, so we kind of came back a little later. But I'll give it a strong eight. And I think if I watched it again, I probably would uh, give it, you know, uh Maybe something a little high, but for now it's a strong eight. But I thought overall, the one thing I appreciated was the sheer amount of work that had to be involved in getting this production done. So if nothing else, hats off to her for that because it was uh, it was it was a movie. Yes, it was it was a movie, and uh, there are a lot of a lot of moving parts. From cast members to wardrobe to scenes and all these other things. So God God bless her for that. One of the things that I I did do is for prep for today, I did kind of pull the songs that were there. Yeah. And I looked at a couple websites and they ranked them. Okay. So these are not necessarily in order that they were done on the production. Mm -hmm. But they ranked them based on, uh, I guess, you know, the connectivity to the audience and the relevancy to what she was doing. Um, but I tell you, before I get into that, let's let's go to the second question. So the second question is this. Um, in terms, okay, so we know or we have a sense of what we thought this was going to be. Yeah. Did it meet your expectations and could you follow the storyline? Um, it exceeded my expectations. What did you think the storyline was? Like when I first watched it? When you first heard about it, you knew it was coming on, it was being promoted. You had an idea of what it was supposed to be. Well, my idea of it, I thought it was going to be like strictly on course of the live action film. Right. uh, And kind of go that way, kind of like stick. Stick with that. Stick with that. Yeah, uh, I knew there was gonna be a lot of uh, authentic African influence based on what I had seen, um, in terms of preview, and of course, if you've heard the album, because the album's been out, because um, it came out with the movie, so kind of knowing those things already, I just kind of assumed that it would stick more with the flow of the. Film. So some of these songs were in the actual movie. Um. Yes and no. Um, Spirit was in the movie when Simba decides to go back home. You you hear that when he's like going right. back home. But a lot of the music, no, is not in the film itself. No. Okay, okay. But the um the quote unquote soundtrack, which is what the this production is based off of, came out when the movie came out. Okay, so it exceeded your expectations. Yes. Okay, cool. And you could stay you f- from your perspective. It was pretty solid in terms of staying with the Lion King story. Yeah, like I can understand how you would get lost, but I don't know. I guess it's just kind of how my brain works. Like I, I, if you know what you're looking at, 
And, I mean, nobody, like, in this room knows The Lion King story better than me because it's my favorite Disney movie ever. So, if you know what you're looking at and what you're looking for, you can put... <laughs> You can put them. You can be like, "Oh, this correlates here. This <laughs> correlates there." It's true. Just like I can't tell you anything about what Steam Steamboat Willie, and I can't tell you seriously yeah, Steamboat know. Willie. <laughs> wow. Just like in the '30s, <laughs> Steamboat Willie. How Daddy. old do you think? He Not is? Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> well, which or is that I, my obvious. Well, favorite. that one too. She literally said Steamboat Willie. <laughs> I can't tell you anything about pirates, like not more than you already know. Well, okay, but okay, Steamboat Willie. All right. <laughs> Nia, now that I'm Steamboat Willie, what do you think? Um, it exceeded my expectations only because I didn't have any. Mm-hmm. When I, f- I didn't hear that the film was coming out until like maybe a month or so before it was going to come out because I don't keep up with her stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And I had no idea that it was going to be related to Lion King. I thought it was going to be more so strictly on black culture. I didn't think it would involve the soundtrack or anything. Um, I also didn't think it would be, like, heavy on the soundtrack or music or anything like that. I knew it was, like, involving Beyonce. Of course, it's going to have, like, some sort of good song or something in it. Right. But I wasn't expecting any of this. And I really do think that how it came out was truly amazing and a lot of work. So... It did exceed my expectations, but I didn't have any to begin with. So, <laughs> yeah, I guess we should have started off by saying, you know, spoiler alert, because you haven't seen it. We're not going to hold back. We're going to really talk some details. So, if you don't want to know specifics about it, um, maybe pause and come back and listen to us after you watch it. Um, if you don't care about spoilers, continue. Um, for me, uh, again, like I said, I was a little confused in spots. Uh, I don't follow Beyonce like that. I don't listen to pop music. I certainly don't listen to to rap music or anything like that. So I don't follow Jay-Z. But I am obviously a huge Disney person. So I was able to grasp what was supposed to happen or in theory what I thought was going to happen. And in some spots, it happened on on time. I understood the cultural references to what's going on today, which I applaud her for. And I thought that not only her, but also Disney Plus, Disney, period, just saying, hey, this was a, something great to do. And you really um, you were really on time with this. Yeah. And you should be um, congratulated for not shying away from this and really putting it to the forefront, because um, uh, I got to tell you, it really spoke. It probably spoke more to the times. Uh, and understanding this journey that this kid was on and coming back home and the ancestors watching, I, I got all that, irregardless of Lion King. Mm-hmm. So I saw it above uh, the movie reference, and I saw it more from a cultural reference. But even then, I was a little lost in some spots. Some spots, we were literally at the club. So <laughs> I was like, I don't know where this kind of fits in. <laughs> so the, the the what is the one that you like, the mood forever or whatever? Yes, move mood number four ever. So okay, so I was a little lost there, but before we get into what our favorite songs were and some of the favorite spots, I'm just kind of go down the line and list. This is from ScreenRank.com. I also looked at Billboard and different places, and they all ranked them and they did their own deal. But um, this is not necessarily all ranking, but I just want to give you a background on the songs that were included and some of the context in which the songs were included. So they've got listed at number 14, Nile. So oh. I remember that one. It was the, when the guys were carrying the, the supposedly a cask and they were all yeah. in the white powder. So Nile celebrates womanhood and black experience. It's not quite the party starter uh, that Beyonce and Kendrick Lamar fans may have been expecting. Visually, the white gray color palette adds a surrealistic effect and the track itself emphasizes the refrain, I'm in the Nile, deep in denial. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that's the Nile. Uh, Scar, number 13, they have it ranked. Scar is another moody, atmospheric tone setter. Uh, for most Disney Plus viewers, the highlight may be the visuals featuring Canadian artist Jesse Reyes, who provides a spooky performance in the woods. That's a, that's a girl, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she, her eyes, that, that was that was pretty uh that was pretty uh pretty those, crazy. Those were contacts. Yeah, I, I know. I'm just saying <laughs> I'm just saying the way that they had this yeah. set up. Uh spooky performance in the woods via a distorted audio effect. Lyrically, Scar is a potent warning song, but unfortunately fades away too quickly. Okay. Uh number twelve they have listed as bigger. So this is the first one that came out. Bigger establishes really? 
Yeah, The States for Black is King, uh, narrated by Mufasa. Of course, we heard uh, James Earl Jones a couple times throughout, and we heard some cuts from the movie itself a couple times throughout. My man James. Right. Beyonce takes center stage with a young king before rolling waves. Not only is this song an anthem for mothers all over the world, but also a reminder to young people that legacy matters and that patience especially matters. Uh, 11 was Find Your Way Back. I actually like this one, the Find Your Way Back. That that spoke to me. I understood. Mm-hmm. It was pretty pretty obvious. Find Your Way Back initially spotlights Beyonce's star power and slowly reveals its African influences, both lyrically and aesthetically. The song itself is catchy uh, with its uh, titular message. The message is in the title. And the image of the focal artist before a giant moon is one of Blackest King's strongest visuals. And there are intended, oh, I'm sorry, and there are indeed plenty of those. Okay, cool beans. So that was um, Find Your Way Back. I actually really like that one. Number 10, they have listed as Kings to the Kingdom, Keys to the Kingdom. Keys to the Kingdom provides a huge platform for Tiwa Savage, Tiwa Savage and Mr. Easy, both of whom fill in for Beyonce and keep the narrative moving. Visually, it's a day-in-the-life sequence for Disney Plus film, and the lyrics are just repetitive enough to keep the audience bouncing back and forth. So the reason I want to name these artists is because, uh, in my opinion, uh, one of the really big things Beyonce was able to do is to use her star power to bring along some lesser-known artists, particularly those of African descent. Mm-hmm. And I thought this film, if nothing else, she did that. And she should be congratulated for it. So I want to try to name as many of these folks as, as possible. So number nine is Ja Array E, J A A R A E. That was the song. Uh, Black is King drops a heavy dose of culture via the hypnotic track with a titular message that reportedly translates to Wise Up. Once again, Beyonce takes a back seat to the spotlight the feature artist, uh, the overall feel of Ja Ere E. They spelled the A R E in the thing, then they spelled the E R A in the paragraph. So I don't know which one is, it is. Um, it's a late night feel. So this is the one where they were in the car in that mm-hmm. hearse and they were driving through town. Yeah, I was looking at that like, wow, that's a hearse. Yeah, with highlights and black lights. Uh, eight is water, where the ladies were in the water. I really like the visual of that yeah. and the things on their head, uh, the baskets, rather. Number seven was spirit. This is also was outside. I thought Beyonce looked really pretty with the braids and the long hair. Uh, black is King ends with a ode to past generation. Spirit allows Beyonce to showcase her vocal range and a full gospel choir adds an epic quality to correlate with the Lion King premise. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's the one that's actually in the film. That's the one, Spirit. Mm-hmm. Uh, six is Other Side. Um, it is. It plays out like a lullaby in which Beyonce anticipates a separation or even death. In relation to the Lion King, the lyrics capture the uncertainties that come with saying goodbye in a dangerous world. Uh, number five is Don't Jealous Me, which we'll find out in a few minutes. Question number three, which is my favorite song. It was a grimy track. It was a lot of dancing. Techno creates a big mood with uh, his vocal incantations. And Yemi Alade or Alad takes the lead visually with a spectacular dance performance. So I like that song. Mm-hmm. Number four is My Power. Number three is Already. Number two is Brown Skin Girl. I'm not going to go into great detail on these because I know you guys probably want to talk to at least one or two of those. And number one. Is moved oh, it was moved forever. forever. Yeah, of course. that's the way they listed it. So, having went through these, let's discuss which of these are our favorites. So, Imani, which one was your favorite? I don't want to choose a favorite because I love the whole movie. But if I had to choose a favorite, it is a tie between. Um, power and already because the the court the choreography in both of those was just like 
man, that make you wanna make you wanna actually get up and dance. Like I don't know, like as like as somebody who used to cheer and dance, like knowing how good it feels when you like execute a routine or some choreography and you know you look good, like sis knew she was looking good <laughs> in all of this choreography. And it was just like a feel good, like everything. It was just really empowering. Like it it, it kinda like stirred some things up when I was watching it. So both both of those already in power were just that those were my favorites um, okay. from the film. Nia? Okay. Well, as I've said before, move forever. Yes. Only because, like, <laughs> it's, such, it's such an unbothered type of song. So you it's want like some a, of those... Um, I do. Glasses. I really do. Because it's like, you... You ain't going to do nothing but break them walking in the dough. Yeah. Hit up against the wall. Hit no, right not the, the long wall. ones. The ones that say mood. I don't... Oh, no. Oh, no, no those were that. nice. Right. Those were dope. Right. I would, yeah, I would get some of those. But it's such an unbothered song. It's like, you do you, I'm going to do me, I'm going to watch my money grow and my, my business, you can stay over there with that, you know? I, I did like the uh, how they interchanged the little boy with Jay-Z. And, and the little that, girl yeah. <laughs> with Beyonce. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I really, that was yeah, so that was really cute. <laughs> ah. um, my favorite song, a uh, part of it was, um, well, I shouldn't say part of it, but my favorite song, if I had to choose one was Don't Jealous Me. It mainly was because I liked the hook. And it was, um, and, and the guy, Yimmy a, a lot. Well, no, it was a, it was a, it was a girl. Yimmy Alade was the one girl that was dancing. Yeah. And then Techno, evidently, is the name of the artist that was rapping. He had all those gold rings and this python yeah. and that kind of stuff. So I thought, from a cinematic standpoint, it was really robust with a lot of different flavors in the shots. The cinematography was really full of stuff visually for folks to just kind of enjoy. And the dancing and the movement, all that kind of just went together. And the kid, to me, was just kind of out of place. It was like he's at the elephant graveyard and he's not supposed to be there. And he's asking him, what are you doing here? Where are you? Yeah. Who are you? That kind of stuff. That's That's what I was feeling like. But beyond that, I thought this is a song I just listened to maybe if I was in my car. And well, probably not. But in <laughs> theory, maybe. And so the the lyrics that I like and the hook was um, sheep don't run with lion, snake don't swing with monkey. And he kept repeating it. And it was like really Lion King S. Yeah. But it was really catchy. And his his uh, accent and his vocals were just really on par. So I thought visually it was probably one of the more um um appealing aesthetics of the entire production so okay cool beans um all right well listen uh overall though um do, are you going to recommend for example if someone asks you hey Imani hey Nia uh, should I watch Black is King yes and <laughs> Well, should I watch it? And uh, sh- should they watch it? And also, um, what are they going to get from it? Everything. Life. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Just, just a little general. <laughs> um, in terms of the value of the film, if you could put it into words, here's what we know. Number one, uh, Beyonce is what I would consider a true artist. She is on the level of, well, I'm going to be careful with this. But to me, she's on the level of somebody like Michael Jackson. In my era, when Michael Jackson put something out, he set the tone for everything that was about to come out. Mm -hmm. Like he started it. Yeah. And Beyonce is on that level. She can start a fashion trend. She can start a music wave. She can do all sorts of things because she's that good of an artist. She does things with a level of excellence. And she has that type of star power. Not many people do. Yeah. People can come out with, Ariana Grande can come out with something tomorrow and it'll just be a good song. Beyonce can come out with something and it will start a trend of people trying to replicate that type of music. Yeah. And that's what Michael Jackson did. And so, um, why was I telling you all this? (laughs) He was Uh, telling us this to see what people would get out of it. It was a part of a question. Really? Really? Because I lost my my whole thought. No, it's okay. It's all right. Well, we'll take it. But you understand what I'm saying. So, (laughs) well, I I know what I was saying. I was trying to give her props for all the value that she brought to this. So, number one, we know that there's value in her star power and her platform, 
which again, kudos to her. She brought people of lesser caliber in terms of visibility, not yeah. of worth, mm-hmm. of visibility onto her platform. So they can now be seen by the world. Right. And then uh, in addition to that, she committed to what has got to have been at least six months to a year's worth of production. Took a year. Took a long time. And she completed it and she did it well. So kudos for that. But beyond that, if someone was to ask you, hey, what would you think about it? Should I watch it? And what am I going to get from it? What do you what do you tell them besides that? Um, well, you said a lot, for one. And for two, <laughs> I would do I recommend it? Yes. I think you should watch it more than – I think you should watch it and watch it more than once um, because you, you learn something or you see something different every time that you watch it because I've seen it twice all the way through, and I notice something different each time. Um and what you would get out of it, it's really, um, to me, the film is what she wanted it to be. It's an experience. Um, I think what I got out of this, out of watching this film, in addition to enjoying the visuals and how it correlates to one of my favorite Disney movies, um, I got to see how art like how she used art to personify two different things she used art to to tell a story that's been told and then she's used right. art to highlight a story that a lot of people don't want to hear which is the black experience so i think she did a great job with merging all of that into one film so where so that it's something that people want to watch it's not too heavy but it's not like you know what i mean right right she's it's still very, staying true to the message right it's it's very creative um and it's i know for me anyway and i'm pretty sure for anybody who's watched it um at some point if not throughout the entire um film it's like it's a self it's a sense of empowerment it's a sense of yeah. um reassurance it's a sense like you get a like some sort of internal thing going on from watching it because it's a very powerful yeah. film if you know what you're watching and you're and you're really really watching it right so i think yeah that's what people would get out of it okay yeah Okay, so yes, I would recommend it, but I recommend it because it gives a different perspective in today's society. I feel like a lot of things are drawn in so many different ways, but especially like black culture and black history. So you kind of have to look at it from so many different angles. And the way that this angle is portrayed, it's portrayed where everyone can understand it because younger generations can relate through the music and look through that. And older generations... I was like Steamboat Willie. Steamboat Willie. <laughs> Steamboat Willie generation. I wasn't going to say it, but. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Christmas is coming. You know? <laughs> Older generation can also understand it as well. And um, it just gives a great different perspective because I feel like people should get out of their opinions and just look at it from different views. And yeah. the songs in it holds a really great message, like the song Denial. If you listen to the last part of that, it just makes you think. And songs and movies that make you think and right. make you want to talk, it's just like should yeah. be normalized yeah. instead of just people just getting on a track. Yeah. 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 Well, I agree with all that. I would say that I would also recommend uh, people to watch it. Um, You sparked something in me when you were talking about the idea of, uh, you know, you said at the beginning, the integrity that you thought the production had. The amount of work it takes to ensure that the color schemes for the regions of Africa that you're representing are correct. All of that's work. And somebody has to do that research to make sure it's authentic and it's mm-hmm. done with integrity. And I think she did that. Now, I don't know. I'm not Afri- of I'm of African descent, obviously, but I'm not From Botswana. Or, right. I wouldn't know. You would show it to me as an American, uh, African, as an African-American. I would say that looks great. But if I'm from Botswana and I saw that and I'd be like, we don't. We don't anything. do that. Right. So. Right. so <laughs> Uh, I've not heard anything other than it, you know, uh, it's been praised for its excellence. But one of the things I did want to say is this. I felt this way after Hamilton also, is that films like this, hopefully for younger generations, it will inspire them to educate themselves on what they're looking at. Mm -hmm. Hopefully it will spark a question in them. In that, where did I come from? 
And what is the value in knowing that? Mm-hmm. Um, so many of our young people, really so many of our old people also, don't know the origins from which they've come. And they don't realize that documents and books and libraries were burnt for a reason so that you couldn't draw back on that knowledge. They don't understand uh, that their ancestors built pyramids that still exist today and they're able to guide themselves through the vast oceans using the stars. They were the first people to be able to do this. There's a huge amount of power in the lineage and the ancestry of Africans. And if you're going to conquer people first, you've got to take away their knowledge of who they actually are. So they'll be less in power. And that's what's happened. And you only have to do it once because after then they'll do it, continue to do it to themselves, which mm-hmm. is, I think, where we are now. I think we're moving back and I'm ever optimistic that we are in that there's a wave of consciousness that is moving throughout the earth, uh, spiritual consciousness, along with consciousness of personhood as well i.e., which is why we're in an area of protest now, because I think a lot of people are starting to say, this is enough. This is not what this I want. This is not normal. Well, normal is, 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 a, is subjective. True. Uh, but when people can feel like this isn't right or this is enough, then change happens. Mm-hmm. So hopefully this feeling of not enoughness will inspire people to investigate who they actually are because that therein lies the power. Mm-hmm. Simba, for example, let's just kind of take it back to the story because we're going to close out in a few minutes. Simba was hanging out with Timon and Pumbaa, not really being a lion. He's eating bugs and laying in the grass and all They're kind of stuff. Really a lion. And then <laughs> you have someone like Rafiki who says, you don't even know who you are. Yeah. And just like the prodigal son Simba just has a paradigm shift, meaning he begins to have a a, a sparkling of light as to who he may be and what that represents. And his behavior immediately changes. That's the hope that when you see kids on the street doing things they shouldn't be doing, not going to school or selling drugs or hurting each other, that they don't know who they are and that something like this could change their paradigm where their behavior immediately shifts. Mm -hmm. That's the hope. And so, again, I'm eternally optimistic in that messages like this will permeate the systems that are. And so I congratulate Beyonce for the work that she's done, although I'm not going to sit and listen to a lot of Beyonce or anybody else in my car for that matter. I appreciate the artistry of it and I appreciate the commitment to task and the fact that she is ultimately uh, on the top in her field and to do something like this, particularly for the culture is, uh, should, should be, um, she should be congratulated for it. So overall guys, we really liked black is King. And, uh, I really liked the, um, personal notes that she put in with her and blue and her and her kids. Uh, I thought that was great. Um, I just thought overall it was good to see the amount of, uh, pigmentation in this uh production oh, and yeah, the excellence representation yes, whole yes. Lot. and it was like a very wide variety because it went yeah. from like albino to like dark skin it was like everybody's yeah. in here it was yeah. all of that yeah we yeah. are all here right we is so, all here well anything else ladies before we cut it out i think um we maybe we hit every base we're encouraging folks to watch it we're encouraging oh, yeah. people to share it yeah. and talk about it yeah, I think if you uh if you got if if you got if you have children, um they should definitely watch it. Um, cuz it's good for for kids to I mean, I'm sure they'll I love the entertainment part of it, but just for them to see themselves on TV uh in a sense is is important. Um, but yeah, definitely go and watch it and enjoy it cuz you will enjoy it. Um and I think this film is one of hopefully what will be many more, but it's certainly been done before in terms of Beyonce doing audio visuals that make you think and make you um, look into um, black culture. So yeah, I hope that she will do more, um, more, and I'm sure she will. Yeah. 
Anything else, Nia? Um, the one thought that was in my head is off topic, so I'm not going to say it. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> well, again, congratulations to her. I, I think um, something like this uh, will hold up over time. And again, congratulations to her. Uh, thanks to Disney and Disney Plus for not shying away from what many could have seen as controversial or, uh, you know, something that uh, they didn't want to involve themselves in. Uh, but I think they're going to be on the right side of history as we as we move forward. And I think this message is going to permeate uh, the masses and we just got to keep the ball rolling. So, guys, thank you very much for joining us here uh, for a quick podcast at my Disney brain as we reviewed Black is King by Beyonce and Jay-Z and uh, Childish Gambino and all these other producers and Pharrell and all these other folks. We don't want to forget them because <laughs> surely we know Beyonce didn't do it by herself. Right. There's a litany of folks. They DJ in Khaled, all the credits. They're in all the credits. But you see her. But, you know, DJ Khaled was a huge part of this. So congratulations uh, uh, to him and, and uh, you know, his excellence as well. Uh, and, and all the folks who were involved, you know, from the smallest to the largest, uh, it takes a complete tribe in order to make this happen. And I'm sure Beyonce has told them that. Uh, but, guys, thanks for hanging out with us. Please, if you haven't done so, go ahead and subscribe to us. Uh, so the next time that we upload new content, which will be very soon, you will be alerted. Please follow us on our social media platforms. And we're prematurely thanking you for 2,000 followers on Instagram. We're only a few folks away. And um, also, uh, we're doing something new on YouTube. This is sort of a reboot. So make sure you find us on YouTube as well. I think you're going to enjoy the twice weekly uploads and uh, being able to see us live in the studio. Well, not live in the studio, but in the studio as we record our podcast, just like we're doing today. So um, be safe, be well, wear your mask. and Wash your hands. Wa- <laughs> wash your hands. <laughs> make Stay your kids home. wash your hands. Well, okay, yeah, kind of stay home, do what you need (laughs) to do, Uh, but be kind to one another, and we hope you guys have a magical week. Thanks.